Pursue the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, let's just quickly run through, you know, a second discourse this morning. And we're looking, about, uh, we're looking at the concerns uh, from the Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. Uh, they have actually expressed a major concern over the passage of the 2022 Finance Bill by the National Assembly. Mudo Yusuf, who is the director of the Think uh, Tank, he said that the hasty passage of the bill calls to question the representation role of the National Assembly, adding that there was no room for public hearing and engagement with stakeholders in the consideration of the bill. Now, and it might interest you to know that on Wednesday, uh, just about uh, you know some weeks ago, the National Assembly passed the Finance Bill, a legislation that proposes key reforms to specific tax taxation, customs, excise, and fiscal laws. The bill amends several laws, including the Capital Gains Tax Act, Companies Income Tax Act and Personal Income uh, Tax Act, that's uh, the Petroleum Profit Tax Act as well, a Stamp Duty Act, Value Added Tax and Public Procurement Act. The organization argued, however, that it's very curious and puzzling that the Senate gave just 24 hours notice for stakeholders to attend a public hearing on the bill. The House of Representatives gave a general notice of about three weeks, but the House passed the bill before the date of the advertised public hearing, which was for the 13th of January 2023. The bill has since then been forwarded to the President, Mohammed Buhari, for assent. This morning, we have uh, joining us this morning, the director himself, uh, Muda Yusuf. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, I I'd like to ask what should be and what is, you know, the best practice in terms of, you know, bills and its ascent, the entire process. What is the best standard? Well, the best practice for the enactment of a law is that in the process of preparing the bill, before it is passed on for any assent or final resolution, stakeholder engagement should take place. That is invitation of stakeholders to get their perspectives, which we call public hearing. In this particular instance, it was actually part of the plan that there should be a stakeholder, I mean, a public hearing. And just as you said in your review, you can see how important this bill is. Look at the range of legislation that this bill is going to amend. And uh, also imagine the impact of this bill and the amendments on businesses, on investors, and on the citizens. And the whole idea of representation is for the members of the National Assembly to represent the people that elected them. And the best way you can represent them is also to listen to them on whatever major legislation <clears throat> that you want to embark upon. So, because of the importance of this bill, particularly to investments, because we are talking about investment, we are talking about job creation, we are talking about poverty reduction, all those cannot happen if you don't have the right kind of legislative environment for investments to take place. So, in this particular instance, the Senate gave only 24 hours for public hearing. You know, imagine for this range of bills that require people to prepare, you have to travel to Abuja and all of that, and all you got was just 24 hours notice. That, for me, is very undemocratic, it's unfair, and the protocol or the procedure is that before you enact this bill, you must hold a public hearing. The House of Rep, on the other hand, initially was a lot more magnanimous. It gave three weeks, which is more like it. The public hearing was supposed to be held on the 13th of January. But for some strange reasons, and, and I imagine that the pressure must have been coming from the Senate, they also just passed the bill. 
even before the date of of of, of the of the public year. So, for the business community, this is coming as a real shock because while people are busy celebrating for May, Christmas, and New Year, they they, they have passed this bill. So, but uh, let, me in, let me come in. Let me even known to many people. Muda Yusuf, uh, let's even come in here now. So. Is there going to be an implication or is there an implication for the passage of this bill without, you know, stakeholders' contribution or being part of the entire process? What uh, is the implication? Well, there are quite a lot of implications. Uh, I mean, you can see the number of bills that have been amended. Just a few. Let me just mention a few. That's going to be, an, that, and this is contained in the amendment, an impo imposition of 0.5% levy on all goods that are imported from outside of Africa. Don't forget, already, we pay import duty on this bill. We pay all manner of charges on this bill, I mean, on these on this goods. Already, we have a 0.5% levy for ECOWAS. Now, a proposal is coming to impose another 0.5% levy on all goods that are imported from outside of Africa. And don't forget, there are so many things that we import from outside Africa, particularly equipment, some raw material that are not available in Africa, machineries and all of that. So if you impose another 0.5% on that, not minding the fact that there are all that charges, even VAT. Not minding the challenges that businesses are going through with the foreign exchange. Not minding the challenges of access to credit, inflation, and all of that. This is an additional burden, not just on business, but on, on citizens. Secondly, there's a proposal in that bill that all services will not be liable to excise duty. What excise duty means is that it's a tax on all your services. Any service that you render to your customer will attract a tax. Already we have VAT on most of these services. We have withholding tax. These companies pay company income tax. They pay all sorts of taxes already, both to the federal and to the state. So where is this coming from? I've never heard it anywhere in the world that you impose extra duty on all services. The risk that we imposed was not stated in the bill. This will be determined by presidential order. So there's another thing hanging over the business community, which of course requires that there has to be some consultation or engagement. That did not happen. There's also a proposal to increase the tertiary education tax. Currently, it is 2.5%. It's now being moved to 3%. So you can imagine, and there are also, also all other proposals like uh, gas flaring tax. The tax on, uh, on gas flaring company, I think, was moved from uh, 30 percent or so to 50 percent irrespective of of the amount of gas that you flare so if you have this and you have business already paying company tax of 30 percent they're already paying tertiary uh, education tax of one percent of their profit they are paying what you call NITDA. NITDA is a technology development agency tax also of 1% of profit. They are paying Naseni tax, also something related to technology agency. 0.25% of their profit. They are paying police trust fund levy of 0.005% of their profit. One would begin to wonder and for what... for any um, contract... Muda Yusuf, uh, the next question should be... I mean, what is the reason for all of this? Is there a reason why the National Assembly would, you know, go on with this hasty passage of the bill? And will there, is, now that, you know, it's been passed, of course, it's in front of the president. Is there anything that can be done? Because I have looked at the engagement. I haven't really seen, 
you know, a public engagement. I'm talking about Nigerians engaging on this. Maybe uh, that's because it was slipped into the process or the period of festivity and everyone has been, you know, carried away with the celebration and have forgotten about, you know, some critical issues that might come back to bite, you know, them in the new year. So, but quickly, in less than a minute, is there a way out of this? Is there a reason for this? Of course, there's a way. We have appealed. We have appealed to the president to withhold assets. I mean, this is, this, this is a democracy. The people have to be carried along. The people need to be consulted. And the processes have been violated by the National Assembly. And if that fails, of course, there's also the legal option. If, there's, if we can prove to the cause that there has been an infraction in the procedure, of, 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 of a passage of the bill, of course, the court has the final say on matters like this. It can interpret the constitution. But the bottom line is that this is not fair to the business community. Um, it's not also fair to the citizens. Well, we, we can only continue to talk about this and hope that, you know, the president withholds his assent, you know, to uh, this particular bill and Nigerians will wake up to the reality of the implication of all of this if it becomes a law. Well, thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We do appreciate your time, Muda Yusuf. Thank you. All right, then. And that's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast this morning. We hope to return tomorrow with more interesting headlines. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Good morning.